We're Jay and Jamie, and in this video, we're challenging ourselves to make one of the most difficult props we've ever made, a magical pirate treasure chest. Can we turn this epic Sea of Thieves inspired concept art into a real life thing? Let's find out. What makes this so difficult is there are so many parts. There's the wood and metal foam work, there's 3D printing for the latches, hinges, and skulls, there's special effects, there's so many things. This concept art is based on the game Sea of Thieves, which is a pirate game that has basically the best art style ever. We're huge fans of the game and the art, so when we went looking for a piece of concept art, we came across this fan-made piece by this artist right here, incredibly talented illustrator. You should definitely check out their Instagram. To get things started, we went into SketchUp. The concept art had a bunch of different angles of the box that they drew, so we were able to bring that into SketchUp and figure out what size we wanted it to be. From SketchUp, we were able to take all the dimensions and use those to make a full-size cardboard mock-up, which is right here. A mock-up is cool because you're actually able to see the dimensions and size and design and see if you really like it or not. So now we know we love our design, we can cut out our real pieces from the real material, which is XPS insulation foam. This is what we use to make our tombstones and the dark portals. It's gonna be perfect for like the rigid wood parts. For the like metal banding that's gonna go around it, we're gonna use EVA foam and some other things. I don't know, we'll use some stuff, don't worry about it. But we gotta start with this. We grabbed the dimensions of our SketchUp file, laid it out on our foam with a marker, and then got to cutting. The next thing is these have to be angled. They're gonna go together like this. They're not exactly 45 degrees. It's like 44.6 degrees, something like that. It doesn't matter. This pirate treasure chest has been sitting at the bottom of the sea. 45 is good enough. So to cut our angles, we can use a knife. We could use like a table saw or a bandsaw. If you have access to those tools, go for it. We're gonna show you a simple way to do it, but use whatever tools you have at your disposal and don't worry about being perfect. This is the face, so it's gonna go in like that. So we're gonna take our square, which is shaped like a triangle, and <laughs> gonna put it kind of right on the edge there, and then we can mark right there. So now we connect the two lines on the back side, and that's gonna give us a reference for where to cut. So I can use a knife to cut off most of that, and then we'll use a rasp to kind of clean up the edges. I wanna say that I got a pretty badass angle there. <laughs> that is really good. No saw, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna use a saw. And we have a treasure chest. <laughs> we finished cutting the angles and we did a dry assembly. It's not glued up yet, but this helps us visualize. Because all these pieces are angled and stuff, the bottom is not flat. And we need to attach this piece to this piece. Here's what we did. See these toothpicks? We put them in parallel to the ground, as flat as they could be, and they align with the bottom edge of here. On the inside, gives us a reference point to where the inside edge should be if it were to be flat. So we'll connect the lines, cut it off, and then we'll finesse it later with a rasp. That totally works. But before we assemble, we need to do texture. We could do this after it's assembled, but I think that when we're able to lay it flat, it's gonna make it much easier. So there's two layers of texture we're gonna do. The first is basically a big line in the middle to make it look like two planks of wood. And then next, we're gonna come in and give it a little bit of wood grain. The easiest way we found to do that is with a flathead screwdriver. So you're gonna wanna push into the foam pretty hard with just one corner of the screwdriver. We have wood grain. <laughs> that looks amazing. Hey, we've got it. It's got texture and we re-dry fit it back together. Everything's lining up perfectly. This looks so cool. <laughs> the other thing we did was the top of this. So instead of cutting exact angles, what we did was cut what's called a rabbit, which is basically like a groove that goes all along the edge. It fits right back in the top. Finally ready for glue. <laughs> to glue the chest together, we're gonna use clear Gorilla Glue. And it's super easy to use. You just spritz a little bit of water on there, stick it on, tape it together. Beautiful. All right, so while the uh, those things dry, uh, we're gonna move on to the next section, which is all the detail. And for that, we're gonna use EVA foam. When you see all those cool cosplay armors, it's usually made out of this stuff. 
So we're gonna use HD foam, which is a product developed by Steve from SKS Props, who has a channel that is in our video description. Mm -hmm. Awesome artist, he makes tons of weapons and costumes and armor and just amazing stuff. So why EVA foam and not just do the whole thing out of pink foam? So the pink foam is too thick and it's kind of a pain in the butt to reduce the thickness. This happens to be the perfect thickness and it's flexible, so it'll glue like really nicely onto the surface of the chest. So the banding's gonna cover these flat pieces, which is two inches, so we want our strips to be a little bit over two inches. How do we glue foam to foam? But two you different kinds of foam. We did some tests. We tried Mod Podge, wood glue, we tried barge, mm -hmm. which totally ate. You know when you spray paint foam, it kind of eats the foam? Barge did the same thing. But barge is great if you're just gluing this foam to itself. That's what yeah. you want to use. Not if you're mixing foams. Anyway, we did some tests and we're just gonna use wood glue because it worked great. It's so hard to squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> But You're almost there. <laughs> Yay. <sighs> Need a rest after that. Test pace. All right, so that's great. We just need to do all the edges now. Mm -hmm. Montage time. What do you think of this treasure chest? Oh. Yeah? <laughs> oh. It's not done yet though. It's not done yet. But we got all of the pieces on and now we gotta wait, what, I guess till tomorrow for everything to dry. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're all done? All done. Well. Tape's off and it's, it's secure. It looks less like a cooler and more like a treasure chest <laughs> at this the point. The pirate igloo. Yeah, the pirate the cooler. Igloo chest. Yeah, it's full of grog. For the long corners of our chest, we're going to use EVA foam again, but this time we're going to use the 6mm. We could use the bigger one, but since we have it, this will give us a little bit more depth and texture. One of the first tough design decisions we had to make was to not include the bones on the corners. We really wanted the skull and the effects on the front to be the focus and to keep the rest of it a little bit understated. So the metal's going to be on the corner and we want it to look clean. So what we're going to do is cut the foam at like an angle and that way when you flip it over, you have one piece of foam that cuts into two and it can come together at an angle like that. We also cut some extra pieces of the 10 millimeter foam because these are gonna go on the outside corners as like little corner guards. Mm -hmm. To glue the foam together, we're gonna use barge. Barge is a contact cement and the way it works is you apply it to both sides of your piece. So you'd be like here and a little bit here. Then you let it dry completely, which takes about five minutes, stick it together and then it bonds instantly. This stuff smells really, really bad, so make sure you use a respirator when you use it. It's been about five minutes. Pretty sure the glue is dry. If you can touch it and it's not tacky, you're good to go. If for some terrible reason you do mess up, if you use a blow dryer and heat it up, you can release the glue. Just like the other pieces, we're gonna glue them on with glue. No, good glue. glue with good glue. It's a good glue. When it is dry, we're gonna come back and trim the tops. We left these a little bit long because I think it's gonna be easier to just trim it to fit after the fact than to try to like cut it exactly at this stage. Don't break our chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's so light. <laughs> All right, back cool. tomorrow. Yep. All right, we had, uh, it's the next day. We had some uh -huh. problems. We had these all nicely glued on and taped and we come in the next morning and nothing stuck. So we were like investigating, trying to figure out what happened. And our best guess is that the wood glue we used was really old and kind of coagulated. So we had to pull everything off, clean off all the old glue. In the past, we've used Gorilla Glue to glue like the pink foam together and it sets up a lot faster. So that's what we used and it worked great. We probably should have used that from the start. So, lesson learned. The other thing we did was we applied the corner guards using the barge, and now it looks awesome. But we gotta wait a little while again. It is time to add the hinges. What we did is we used our 3D printer. And we made our own hinges. So let's go take a look at how we did that. We modeled four different parts based on the concept, so they're kind of beefy and stylized. There are the back hinges, the front latch and hasp, and the hinge for the latch. 
The latch will get glued into the hinge when they're done printing because it'll be easier to print this in two pieces and easy to put together. The hinges are what's known as print-in-place models, which means they print as a single piece but still function normally. It's really cool. Once everything was all prepped, it was off to the printer. We did a few rounds of tests to get them just right, but the results came out perfect. Now it is time to cut these mortises. Normally a hinge mortise is cut sort of halfway between the top and the bottom. Since our top was overhanging though, we decided to put the whole thing into the bottom. How about a perfect fit on the first try? See, we mess up a lot of things. We don't mess up some things. <laughs> now I'm just gonna cut two more in the front and then we're gonna move on to texture. Before we paint it, what we wanna do is beat it up. This thing has been in pirate battles and through Kraken attacks, so. <laughs> At least three Krakens have attacked this treasure chest. It cuts like butter, so you just need a light touch. You're gonna make little divots in there and round over the edges. And just add all those fun battle scars. Just like a scar on your body is a memory and it tells a story, you want marks like this to make this piece feel like it's been in the world. So we've got a couple on the back and now I'm gonna show you how we cut some in the front. Well, there you go, a couple of battle scars, kind of nerve wracking, taking a knife to, you know, this after <laughs> doing all of this work, but it adds a lot of character. I think it's a super important element. almost ready to put a coat of sealer on. But before we do that, we got one last thing to do, and that is put, put a little dab a dap dap dab a dap dab a dap A dab a dap <laughs> So any of these like big gaps like there, we can use some of this. Real quick, we're gonna heat seal this gray EVA foam, which makes it easier to paint. We have to be a little careful when we do this because if the heat hits the pink foam, it'll sort of melt and deform. So we are going to seal the whole thing with dry lock. And what dry lock is, is basically a masonry sealer, but it works really great to seal foam. It waterproofs it and it gives us a nice surface to paint. Now there's a couple types of dry lock. There's original dry lock, which has a sandy texture. The other type of dry lock is dry lock extreme. Somebody should ride by on a BMX bike, just holding this. Through fire. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait two, three hours for this to dry and then we're gonna take the next step. Now we're gonna stick with the concept arts, which means we're gonna make the wood kind of a purplish color, which is really cool because it gives it kind of a supernatural look. Technically it's called plum. Plum. We're <laughs> painting it plum. So it'll be plum with some washes of black over it and maybe some lighter purple highlights. And then this will be silver and kind of blackish and... Metal. Metal color. Black and steel. <laughs> We almost used a whole bottle of paint. It's so much paint. The dry lock is so thirsty. It like really soaks up a lot, but I yeah. love this color. It's really? like purple heart wood. It's kind of yeah, cool. <laughs> totally. It totally looks like purple heart. After two more coats of plum, we use an obsidian metallic paint to do all the metal. We also use the same stuff for the 3D printed hinges and all the metal parts. So for the leather straps and the concept art, we actually made them. And we were this close to putting them on, but we actually fell in love with how it looked without them. Don't worry, we'll save these for another project. So this is always, for me, the scariest part, because we have this pristinely painted box, and now we have to mess it up. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about painting, though, is if we totally screw up, we can just start over we again. We can. <laughs> It'll take some time, but we can just yeah. paint over it. For that reason, it's worth just going for it, just being like, hey, you just gotta just do make it. it dirty. Just commit. <laughs> and if we totally screw it up, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We're gonna start with a wash. And what a wash is gonna do is give us some shadows in our dark areas. To do that, we're just gonna take some black acrylic paint and water it down. This chest looks evil now. Yeah, I'm so happy with this. <laughs> now maybe it's a little too dark, so we're gonna add some dry brushing in to bring out some highlights. Now what we're gonna do is try and hit these bottom corners here, kind of where like if the light was shining down, it would bounce off those corners, give it just a little bit more depth.
That's so cool how just that little bit of highlight makes it look like metal. I don't even know what to say. I mean, it was like very bright and purple, then it was really dark, and now it's just got, I don't know, there's a lot of contrast. I think there's a lot of depth. This is just excellent. Very nice job. The next few sections might feel like they're a little bit out of order. That's because we were constantly jumping back and forth between, you know, the skulls and the hinges and the electronics. We were constantly waiting on things to dry. And it seemed like the video would make a little more sense if we did it this way. So if things seem out of order, don't worry about it. We're still waiting on things to dry. So many things <laughs> need to dry. So many things. But we're gonna work on the skull in the meantime. This was 3D printed and the model was done by an artist we found online who specializes in Sea of Thieves style art. It was perfect for this. We ended up printing the entire thing because at the time we weren't exactly sure how we were gonna cut it or attach it to the box. But I'm glad we did because it came out awesome. So the back of the skull is gonna end up getting cut off because this is gonna get attached to the box. This is the part where I'm explaining how I thought it was a better idea to print the whole thing, which in hindsight, it wasn't. We talk a little bit about this later, but what we ultimately should have done is print the skull in exactly the form we wanted to use it. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out all this next stuff. Also, it's worth noting that this skull is like the same size as the um, skulls you can get at the big box store. If you don't have a 3D printer and you don't want to 3D print stuff, this guy will probably work just as well. We used a 3D app to try to figure out exactly where we wanted the skull to go, which we could use as a guide. We figured out the angle of the box. Now we're using a laser and hold it. And my super steady hands. <laughs> yes, surgeon's hands over here to mark exactly where we need to cut. This is about as close a line I think as we're ever gonna hope for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it gonna fit? He fits! That's pretty good, man. Not bad. Am I centered? Um, Not perfect, but Mostly on. fits. <laughs> come on, yes! So we printed two more of these. We also printed the jaws and the teeth, and we just glued the teeth back on. It probably would have been easier to just print them with the teeth in place, but whatever, we glued them back on. It's fine. Other thing we did is we primed everything with just a spray primer to get it ready for painting and painting. stuff. For the front skull though, we are going to draw some cracks and cut the cracks out. That way our blue glowing smoke will come out not only the eyes, but the cracks as well. In hindsight, I think we should have tried to print it in this state. Yes. Uh, like the full state with the cracks and the yes. eyes and the whole back. Totally. The lesson is, if we had planned ahead, this would have saved a lot of time. This is the fun part. We get to paint these. And to do that, we're going to use an airbrush. This is uh, new to us. This used to belong to my grandfather, actually, who made really amazing model ships. We started off by spraying on sort of a beige color base coat. Next, we used some light browns and some slightly darker browns just to give it a little variance in the color. And then we used some black on the eyes and the nose for the side ones. To bring some of the highlights back in, we hit the edges with a little bit of dry brushing. I mean, for not knowing much about airbrushing, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. Now, we gotta figure out how to attach these things. We have somewhat of a plan. <laughs> we have an idea. That's being generous. There is, there is a, an inkling of an idea. It worked. <laughs> First try, too. We only had one idea. So if this didn't work, <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. But it did work, and now we're gonna show you how we did it. First, we centered the skull on the box, and then we used a toothpick to mark a little tiny hole where the temple meets the box. Then we glued our toothpicks into the skull using super glue, and then we put hot glue on there for extra, extra strength. Then we applied some Gorilla Glue to the end of our pokey jammy sticks, and we didn't even need to clamp it because it was a beautiful pressure fit. Once the glue dries, we'll fill in any gaps with a little dab-a-dap, and then we'll touch it up with paint. <laughs> to make the fog part, we are gonna use the microfogger. It's so, uh, there's it's, so much. <laughs> so much. It's battery powered and small, which is great because you can fit it in almost any prop without having to run like big hoses from your giant fog machine. It even has a remote, so mm -hmm. you can power it remotely with the remote. <laughs> you can also hook it up to like an Arduino and power it that way. A lot of cool options. So this is gonna go inside the skull. Mm -hmm. And we took an LED strip that has a rubber waterproof coating around it, soldered some wires on it, and we've gotta fit all this stuff inside this little skull. 
The LED strip got hot glued into the skull and angled so the wires could come out the bottom and be hidden. We have to drill a hole in this box for this hose. Drilling pink foam is pretty horrible, but if you go really, really slow, we can make a pretty clean hole. So we 3D printed our own little piece to go on the end of the hose. So it fits in the same way and it has three prongs. One will go up and kind of come out of the cracks of the skull and these two will hopefully come out the eyes. Okay, that works pretty well, but not exactly right. It's coming out the eyes, but not quite enough up. So we're going to do one more tweak. We'll 3D print another piece. We'll check out what that looks like after. Now the side ones are permanently attached, but this one needs to be able to come off and on in case we need to replace the lights or just mess with it at all. So we're going to use magnets. We cut some pieces of the 10 millimeter foam and then we glued a magnet inside. And then this other magnet will be glued to the box. And now we just need to attach these to the inside of the skull like that. Boom, perfect fit. Before we attach the hinges to the top of the box, we're gonna install our Arduino and our battery pack, which control the lights and the microfogger. These are all components that we're gonna to wanna to take off again someday and possibly replace or repair. So we don't want them permanently attached. Hot glue is perfect for this. This thing needs to get charged and we need to refill the fluid periodically. So we need to attach this in a way where it's easy to get back in and out. We glued these down and now we're just gonna use some zip ties. There we go, that's really all we need. Here's the inside of the box once we got everything plugged in. It looks super clean. We routed the hose around so it's out of the way. And you can't actually see any of this stuff unless you open the box all the way up so it's nice and hidden. It's time to attach the back hinges and to do that, we're using drywall screws. These are nice because they're actually got this cool blackish like gunmetal color and they have nice big threads which are gonna help with the pink foam. These aren't meant for some sort of super strong strength but it will be enough with a little bit of glue to hold them in place and to have the box open and close normally. So all I'm really gonna do is put it in place. I'll take a little bit of glue. I'm just gonna gently screw it in. Okay. Finally, with the latches in place, we can put the bottom parts in and those just got lightly screwed into the foam. Next, it's onto the handles. We're gonna make our final handles out of EVA foam. Because it's a little flexible though, we are going to sandwich in some wire between two layers. That way it gives us a little bit more rigidity. After that, we use the rotary tool to shape the outsides and give them that rough metal look. We hit it with a few coats of Plasti Dip to seal it. Next, we use a little barge to attach the small metal hinges. And finally, painted it with the same obsidian metallic paint. To attach the handles, we put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the back of the hinges and gently screw them into the foam. Perfect. For the jaws on the side, we used the same trick with the toothpicks. We marked the location, glued them into place, the only tricky part was fitting them around the handles so it looked like it was biting down on them. This front one should go in a little bit easier because we don't have to like have a thing in its mouth. <laughs> Can that be our next project? We animate the chest. <laughs> ah! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm done. One of the finishing touches we're gonna add to this pirate chest are rivets. We are using little pearls that we hit with some spray paint. We just got these at the craft store. I've also heard you can use googly eyes and those work really well too. So we pre-measured where we want these to go. And the cool thing about these is they're sticky. So all we gotta do is take it off and stick it on. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these on and then we're gonna touch them up a little bit with some paint.
Even though we weren't perfectly faithful to the concept art, I think this thing is amazing. So hopefully we did it some justice. Maybe in a future video, we can find out what secrets are locked inside. <laughs> the thing about a project like this is it took us an incredibly long time. <laughs> and it's not something we could really sell or anything like that. So the reason we can do projects like this is because of your support. If you do wanna help out, there's a few ways you can do that. The first is to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment, which helps us out with things like sponsors. Second is we do have a Patreon where you can support us directly and get cool stuff like 3D printed files and plans, stuff like that. And lastly, just share the video. If you know anybody who likes pirate stuff, send it their way. Thanks for watching y'all. Until next time, stay wicked. And today we're gonna mill, we're gonna mill, we're gonna mill it. Mill it. We're milled it. Does that matter? What do I want to say? <laughs> Since these are gonna be a. Uh, yeah, yeah. When we're when blah 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 blah. When it is. <laughs> while we went for. While we went. While we went. Ah ah ah. Okay. I'm done.